Hello guys, this is Kazrak bringing you a tank review. And this is gonna be a special one since I didn't do any tank reviews of a tank destroyer before. The Isu ISU 152. A tank which actually served in the war. It was quite a beastly tank destroyer, but what people forget about it, it yeah, we're gonna go into the history in just a second. So let's start off with saying what it is. It's a tier eight tank destroyer from the German, uh, from the Russian line. It's positioned because we have two German, uh, God, Russian heavy lines, not heavy tank destroyer lines. After this, you have the choice of the SU-152 or the SU-100M1. And the difference being with the two lines that the SU-152 line is leading up to the Object 268 with very punchy guns, with very good penetration, not that much armor. The tier 9 and 10 do have the ability to bounce off shots, but the, low, the lower tier, don't, not, not so much. The uh, SU and ISU don't bounce a lot. And the SU-100M1 uh, one, one line, fast rate of fire, decent penetration, leading up to tanks that actually can bounce uh, shots because of the sloping, but not very high alpha damage. The average damage like for the tier 10 tank is 550, so that's nothing if you think about it, but it shoots 5 times per minute, while the SU not as you are, the object does just, just shy of 4 seconds but does 850 average damage. So, let's go back into garage. So as I said, tier 8 uh, tank destroyer, probably the most feared motherfucker on the battlefield. If you're in a tier 8 game and you see a issue on the enemy team, you are shitting bricks. There's no way around it. It's just the ultimate troll gun. The ultimate fear factor. In real life, this tank actually carried this gun, the 152mm uh, ML20S, which is a derp gun, if someone doesn't know. It's like cut off over here with the, uh, with the springs. You can see it like on this picture. This picture is actually historically accurate. It has a short derp gun. The Russians actually didn't didn't use this as a tank destroyer. Well, they used it as a tank destroyer, but main use of this was RT. It was an RT tank. It was self-propelled artillery because of the caliber of the shell that it carries. So, yeah, let's go into the tank itself. So, 1010 hit points, which is quite low for a tank destroyer on this tier, but what can you do? 50 tons uh, weight. The, if you're getting rammed by medium tanks, you will do exactly the same damage to them as they do to you. Maybe you will do a little bit more. 700 horsepower engine giving us a little bit of... Yeah, it, it can accelerate, but it's not very fast. 43 speed limit, which ca you can reach, but you're gonna have problems reaching the maximum speed limit in this. 21 traverse speed which is quite low, but you cannot do anything about it. Clutch braking is a good idea, also snapshotting and everything to increase your rotation. If something comes close to you, then you're basically... you won't stand a chance unless it's a mouse. Hull armor, 90, 90, 60, meaning anything can go through the front, side and rear without a problem, without thinking even. The only thing you have to take care of is not shoot the gun mantlet. If you're shooting your eyes, don't shoot the gun mantlet. You can try to slope yourself, but you can see it's counterproductive. Once you start sloping yourself, you display this as a front, as as a unsloped plate. So yeah, like if you do just this, then maybe your gun mantlet will soak up the shots. But if someone has a brain, he will shoot your lower plate and disable you, or shoot you in the wheel and just come around and shoot you in the back to be out of the side of this gun. Uh, 370 view range, that's quite average for tier 8. 600... Yeah, 625 signal range, that's quite low. Normal, normally, typically on tier 8, you already get the 700. 
uh, radius, but that that's not that big of a problem. Now, let's go into research. You start off with... Basically, I don't even think you get this engine. Yep, you don't. So, you start off, you have those two guns unlocked. Yep. You start off with a stock gun, which is the same gun you get on this tank. The 152mm. There are people who just play this as a derp tank without unlocking those two guns and just go into the issue. Then you're in for a treat because you still have to unlock those two guns before you get into those two guns. So It's better off to unlock those two guns on the previous tanks. And it's a they are actually very good on the last tank. 175mm of penetration on tier 7 is nothing to laugh about. It can you can say it's quite low, but it's typically Russian Chinese uh, trend that you have that kind of penetration with a 122 millimeter shell. 390 average damage. This is basically like an IS gun, but just a lot more, a lot faster firing. You can see eight rounds per minute. That's quite significant, now, isn't it? So yeah, for that tank, I would highly recommend you get those guns. It's quite actually pre a pleasure to play them with it. But once you unlock the issue and you go get in the issue, there's a big problem called if you mount this gun, because you're gonna get it from the last tank if you have a brain. You're in for a ball of shit because you have to unlock the tracks, you have to unlock the engine to make this tank mobile, and then you have to spend 63,000 experience to get the gun. There are two options of a gun for this tank. Honestly, it's not a contest. It's one way, not the other. You have a choice of two guns. The BL-10 and the BL-9S. This is basically a modified uh, IS gun. IS-3 gun. This is the ultimate troll gun in this game. But we'll talk about it in deep in a second. We'll talk about the gun in just about a few seconds. So, what I would recommend, get a track first, then trying to walk your way towards the BL-10 and then getting the engine, but the issue is quite slow with the stock engine. The difference being 100 horsepower, but still it's 100 horsepower with that kind of weight that you have to pull, so it, it's quite significant. Equipment wise for this tank I would say, I ha personally have camouflage net, binox and rammer. And I didn't have the rammer for a long time, I just had binox and uh, camo lying around so I wanted to put them on this tank. I would probably swap uh, the camo netting for other ventilation just to increase the overall performance of the crew. Shall, uh, Consumables rack standard, I just use normal fire extinguisher, repair kit and first aid kit. As for ammo, that's actually a funny thing. I don't use... I don't use at all. I don't use any gold rounds. I only have AP rounds in this tank. Nothing else. You'll see why when I'm go when I get into the gun. As for crew goes, crew is a uh, five-man crew. We get... Basically, you want... You firstly want six cents. That's... That's... You have to have it. When you get six cents, then you can start playing around with tricks. Safe stowage, not needed, honestly, I don't get ammo racked a lot in this tank. Uh, repair uh, would be pretty good for just, you know, getting your tracks back up so you can turn around again, but most importantly, camouflage, I think. Clutch breaking, a very good skill that you can use on this tank. Uh, I have snapshot on this, I don't know why. Uh, it actually, snapshot, if you guys don't know, works on tank destroyers, but it works in terms that it lowers the gun dispersion, the gun uh, increases the gun accuracy when you move around your gun. Like instead of the turret, just the gun. So yeah, there's not a lot of skills good. There's two loaders, so honestly one gets safe storage, the second one gets repairs or something because they don't get good skills. I don't remember. Who's the radio operator? Oh, the commander is the radio operator. So commander has, again, like a ton of skills to skill up. You go, you go for six cents, you can go for broader arms, 
you go for situation awareness, for recon. You you have to go for all those on the command alone, so a lot of work to do. But yeah, let's get into the main thing of this tank. Let's just compare the three choices that you get. There we have it. From the left to the right, you start your starting gun if you unlocked it on the SU-152, the DL uh, D25 mode. Mod, mod 1944, the BL9S and the BL10. You can see the difference between the BL9S and the DL. The only significant difference, if you think about it, is the penetration and the rate of fire. Your rate of fire goes down significantly because the second uh, value on the D. 25 is actually the ISSUS speed of fire, so 8.11 seconds. Uh, against 6.9, so yeah, you, you're shooting slower, you have better accuracy in terms of 0 0.03, same average damage, same aiming time, same caliber shell, with just a huge ton more penetration, you get 50 more penetration, but Let's go a little bit more to the right, and this is a tier 9 gun. Let's go more into the right, and you can see clearly the BL-10, the most feared and scary as shit gun in this game on a tier 8 tank. It has a slow rate of fire of 3.41 on the SU, but now the fun starts. 286 penetration with IP shells, 329 with gold shells, 750 average damage and 90 penetration with HE ammo and 950 average damage with HE. Meaning if you see a Leopard 1, you can shoot HE at it and you will do inflict full damage. Actually that's a good idea, I'll maybe start, I'll maybe start carrying around a few HE shells just to dirt people in the face. With an accuracy of 0 0.39, uh, no, sorry, 0 0.41. This is the worst uh, penetration volume because this gun also goes on the object. So everything that's better goes on the object. So 0 0.41. Just to give you an example, it's better, <laughs> and this is tragic, it's better than the Patton's gun. The Patton uh, Tier 9 American medium tank has worse accuracy than the BL 10. After 8.6, the BL 10 became horribly accurate. I would even say it can do snapshots at fucking 500 meters. It's scary as hell. And 3.4 aiming time, which is quite longish. But then again, you are a tank destroyer, you shouldn't care. So, what does this mean? Basically, you start off with this gun so you don't have to make your decision. Then you have the decision between those two guns and you don't have to buy them. Mind you, you don't have to buy any of them. But you have to be a retard not to do that. Because you can see it's they are sidestepping from the main line into the object. But the moment you get the object, you still have the derp gun. This is the derp or the BL10. So th that's not much of a contest. You have to get the BL10. So you have to unlock this gun. Uh why do I say that this tank is scary as hell and that people are frightened when they see ISU and stuff like that? Basically, to give you an example, this is a tier 8 tank destroyer, right? So let's go to one of the best tier 8 tank destroyers in the game. Let's go check the Ferdinand, yeah? Ferdinand has a beastly gun, doesn't it? Let's go check the French tank destroyers, AC-48. Let's check this one out. And let's just, for comparison's sake, also let's get the American gun, where's the, of course from the prototype, because the prototype actually is the version without the turret, so he, am I saying that correctly? No, the T-28 will have the better gun. So let's get the T-28's gun, and let's just go and put our little comparison, the BL-10. So. Germans, Americans, French. 
Comparing, uh, we're not looking at the fire rate, honestly. The thing that's the most important is this, the penetration. 246, 248, 257. And that's considered high. This is one of the highest penetrations in the game. And it's on a tier 8 tank destroyer. A tier 8. Tier 10s don't have that penetration. Tier 10s can exceed penetration of those guns. They can't with the BL-10. Another thing, notice Alpha. 750, 490, 400, 400. Meaning you're doing 350 average damage more than the American gun and the French gun. Only the Ferdinand doing almost 500 average damage is a 90, 90 damage less. So 200 something. Aiming times, they have better aiming times, that's obvious. Plus, the accuracy on all of those guns is better. The BL-10 likes to troll, that's why it's the troll gun. But, the sheer fear of people coming around a corner, getting hit by this gun, for an average of 800 damage, typically, you can have shots going up to almost a thousand damage without a problem. Just people, when they see our issue, they don't want to come forward, because if you think about it, when you're playing tier 8 tank, tier 8 heavy tanks, like the 110, well, with two most average of average hits, he will kill you. If the issue hits two hits, and he will penetrate, because the issue doesn't care about sloping, you have enough penetration to go, if he's standing like that, then maybe you can bounce off this side. But if you aim at slight English, you're gonna go in. The penetration is just too big. Plus the issue has the gigantic troll factor because the shell is 152 millimeters wide. Which means if a tank like, for example, just to give you, oh not this, just to give you an example and to put you into perspective. I know I'm giving a very weak example. The Leopard has 35 armor on the sides. The E50 has more. 80. So, just to give you an example, if you're shooting something that has a side armor of 50 or less, your shell overmatches. It doesn't matter what kind of angle, what kind of uh, positioning, it doesn't matter. If he's side-scraping you, you can still shoot and penetrate his armor, because there's not... If the only option you will bounce off someone is when he's in the outer bounce zone, meaning above 70% yeah, the angle uh, of your shot is above 70, so if someone's side scraping like this and you shoot him over here, then you are going to bounce. But most of the time people side scrape and give you something like this. Then you can shoot wherever you want and it will go in. It will go... Just aim at the most unsloped part of his armor and it will go in him. It will overmatch. Uh, overmatching is basically a mechanic allowing you to penetrate any given armor at any given uh, angling except for outer, outer bounds. Because your shell just overmatches, it's three times bigger than the thickness of the armor of the target you are shooting at. And you're doing 740 average damage, which means no one wants to get around you. The lowest shell that you can fire does 400... Uh, 563 damage, the highest, 938. This is a troll gun. But it has its downsides. First of all, it's a troll gun. It loves to sh put the shots somewhere, God knows where. It, you can take a perfectly aimed shot, and it will just travel into space and shoot down a space station. Or a alien ship, I don't know. It just goes goes somewhere somewhere it disappears it goes into the warp because it's so awesome but you can have shots like I said from 500 meters while snapshotting and you will hit and put fire in people uh, because this gun does so much damage and has so good penetration you are able to armor rack tanks 
from full HP without a problem. If you get the shot on the ammo rack, you will kill him. It's not like normally you get. If you get hit in the ammo rack, you have a yellow ammo rack and you're not getting killed because the damage inflicted on the module isn't enough. The BL10 does enough. The BL10 can one shoot IS freeze without a problem. If the IS freeze is stupid enough to go sideways and stop and allow you to properly aim at him, then he's dead. I did that, it is possible. IS8, same deal. Most tanks, if you know where to shoot, you will inflict critical damage with this gun. It just has to land where you're aiming, and that's a whole different story. But yeah, enough for talking in the garage, let's go into the game. And let's show you like one or two maybe games, and we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, see you there. So here we have the first battle. We're playing on Redshire, it's a tier 9 game with only 3 tier 9s each side. We got ourselves into a healthy position. I selected this game by damage. I honestly don't have a lot of replays with the BL10 uh, gun on in this patch because I, I didn't play the issue all that much. I'm almost at the object 704, but I just didn't didn't spend the time on actually getting a lot of footage. So we're just sitting here. I'm just gonna increase the speed because it's gonna be it's gonna take some time. Lover is hiding. I had a little bit of a discussion with the T32, T29 telling him like go there and help out the T44. I don't know what the fuck is the T30 doing there except for dying. The T29 should go and help him out but he just doesn't care. And I'm trying to position myself, you're gonna see how much of a troll gun this is probably in this game. I remember this because I had some games in this. The T30 got a shot out on the AMX. But he's already dead, so yeah, fantastic walk. Then we have an IS tank. Most important thing with the issue is you have to aim and see. Even though you are perfectly aimed, I should have waited a second more, that's the even with the server side reticle, you still have to wait for a second more to be actually able to put a real hit in. But I was scared that he's gonna fall back, so I took a little bit of a snapshot. You can see here, I spotted with my binoculars and a gigantic hit on the lion, putting him on 500 life, and now he doesn't feel so brave. I have 6 cents, so I know I don't have to back out. And unfortunately he will back off. You can see people... The mindset of a typical player when he gets shot by the BL-10 is to fall back. And anyone who sees that the friend in front of them just got hit for 700 damage and there's a ISO on the enemy team, they know you're looking that way and they will not charge, which is stupid. You reload for 15 seconds at the least. So, why not? Why not charge? Why not try to do something? Oh, this guy is doing a good job spotting, but unfortunately they are hiding behind that. Uh, well, our arty is supporting him, which is good because we have no one over here. Our team is just hugging the other side, not doing jack shit. Oh, and of three going for a wild run. Aim and hit. And you can see after one hit, he got hit by the T-34, now I need just to put one more hit and he's dead. Now Artie of course hits him. T-44. Boom! One hit, 200 life left. You can see why the, the issue is such a troll. Now IMX is going for... Yeah, he's gonna try to kill the T-34. Unfortunately I cannot help him without putting myself in too much danger. I'm waiting for my Binox to kick in so if something comes around the corner that I can spot him and shoot it. This T-29 should be down there and help that T-44. Now he gets hit by the T-31. T-34-1. 
And I'm just waiting for him to put... You can see, he knows that now I know where he is. Three guys got hit for a very healthy amount of damage, so he he is not eager to come around the corner. What's more so... funny about the issue, there's a super pushing on the other side of the map. Uh, after 8.8 .8, it actually won't matter, but... If you're playing this right now, and you want to shoot a super pershing just just a little vo voice of uh, my voice of advice don't bother aiming at weak spots <laughs> cause you don't have to this gun has enough penetration to go through whatsoever armor the super pershing has you can still have a low damage low penetration roll and not inflict as much damage but 90% of the time you will do critical damage and boom mx dead 300 uh, unfortunately only 300 damage because someone hit him. Now I have two heavy tanks standing right beside me, not doing anything. They're just standing there and playing as tank destroyers. If you see those guys in your game, you can hit them in the face for me. I wanted to turn around to check the T-34 but I noticed he's behind... Uh, there's a little bit of a corner there and he was behind it so there was no sense for me to actually go there and try to do anything so I'm still waiting I'm waiting for a spot on the T-34 or the IS but honestly let's just increase the speed of this game cause target P spotted aim and he gets hit by I don't know what but he gets one shot almost and the SC-152 boom dead you can see that I didn't even take the proper time to aim. Reloading, T-34. The eye has finally moved his ass over there. T-29 is going into the city. I'm waiting. I even will... I think I'm gonna say for to them that... Yeah, draw him in. That's what I'm saying. If you have an issue on this hill, draw the enemies towards you. They don't have to know that I'm here, but if he comes around the corner, gets hit for 800 damage and I won't get spotted he's the one that's getting screwed so I'm just gonna increase the speed again now I go into a little bit of a beast mode I don't see the act panther also AC spotted I don't know if I will shoot at the AC I saw him I saw that my cursor was over him and I actually saw him, so let's increase it to two times. Yeah, now I tuned my tank around, but I lost spots on him. Trying to position myself behind bushes, you have to be careful with this, so you have to always be in the second or third line. You cannot take the charge because you don't have armor to do that. Unfortunately, of course. I'm waiting for someone to get spots either on those two guys. They will come around me. Or on the AC. The AC is over the hill. So I decide I want to try to take out the IS and the T-34. With a... And faces on the T-34. Because I think of him as a bigger danger than the IS tank. You can go through the mantlet of the T-34 honestly. Boom, IS dead. I back out because I got hit by the T-34. Artie hit kids near me. Taking my tracks off. So this is not looking good for me. I need help. And I call for help for my team. I want them to go there and spot this T-34 but they not into it. Now the T-34 says affirmative and goes the fucking other way. So congratulations T-34, you go. You went arty hunting where there's a tier 8 heavy still here. I'm just moving very slowly. Trying to spot, like moving a tiny bit, waiting for Binox. And there we go, there he is. 
And unfortunately I won't see him, so yeah, that's it for the game, let's look at another one. So here we have the second game. We're playing on Belagorsk. Severogorsk. It was called Belagorsk. I don't have an idea where to go with a tank destroyer, so I'm just trusting my gut. Come around here and look at this hit. Boom! Tracking hit in the top of the track with full damage. 696 is quite an, a low damage roll. Most of the time the, the BL-10 will troll you, it will not give you your maximum damage hits. Boom! Second hit, 700 damage without a problem, guys. It's been 15 seconds, the guy is already on 100 HP, he's not feeling confident about himself anymore. And I did, 1.4 thousand damage. So let's just speed it up a little bit. We're gonna go around this. Yeah, just like walking around, trying to get into some positioning. Now I spot a whole herd of heavy tanks. I did the worst possible thing that I could have. I shot the E-75 in the upper glaciers while shooting down from a downward angle. There's no way I will get a penetrating hit. But a Tiger is a whole different story. Tiger gets hit for 800 damage, he inflicts 200 damage to me, now I reload, I see the E-75 is trying to get this AMX killed, just trying to position myself so I have a shot on him. And boom! <laughs> be patient, young Padawan, be patient. We are losing this game by 2 kills, now it starts to even out. And just the fact that I'm over here, the enemies don't feel uh, that confident about going around. They are thinking to themselves that mm, that's not a good idea to go in front of a Asus gun. DLC is behind us, which is really, really pissing me off. You can see the AMX 1390 is like, thanks Isu. Well, honestly, losing life to save a scout, it's not my type of... I, I don't play like that, I don't care about scouts 90% of the time. Plus, he was stupid enough to go on a frontal fight with our E-75, so he's the one responsible for for his death, not me. If I came around that corner, there were two tanks that would hit me easily. Now, I don't know, I didn't see the full silhouette of the Type 59, but I penetrated his turret from the back anyway. The AMX is getting a little bit annoying. We are 77, so it's still not decided who wins. So I take a little bit of a chance and go here to spot the ELC. The Type 59 could have hit me without a problem. ELC is over here. I'm just gonna go around this little thing because you had something shot right behind me. I finish off the ELC back out to give myself some cover and now the game is in our hands now the game is already decided I doubt that we're gonna do any damage more let's just speed up the replay D28 prototype, oh and yeah we missed the shot with the BL-10, now I reload, I get a hit I get hit by the Lorian but he's gonna get killed in a few seconds, so yeah, that's it, let's go into the garage. So, it's a 152. A very powerful tank in, a, in the hands of a skilled player, which will wait for his opportunity. What's more to say about it, uh, always play on the second line. Try to hide yourself behind bushes, try to use your camo rating. This tank has amazing camo, but remember, the whole spotting mechanic is a little bit weird so you have to if you want to be not spotted you have to be behind a bush not in the bush and by behind I mean you cannot see you you have to be in a place where you see the silhouette of the tank of the enemy but you don't see the tank itself the bush cannot be transparent the moment the bush becomes transparent for you that's the moment where you can be spotted while shooting through the bush 
So yeah, you have to take full account of what you have in your disposal. You have the best tier 8 gun in terms of penetration and damage, which can beat anything into submission. The only thing that you have to remember, you have a slow rate of fire of 15 seconds. You reload the gun in 15 seconds. But you can inflict tremendous damage and even more just the the psychological factor of this tank is so big. People are so scared of the issue because they know that if the issue will have a chance it will beast mode them into submission. So yeah, overall I think it's one of the most fun and trollish tank in the game. That's this is one of those tanks that I play if I if I have a very bad mood because I know that I really really have to have a bad day to not play good with the issue. Because one hitting things is just plainly joyful. I didn't tell you but almost all tier 6 vehicles will get one hit by you with a good damage roll. So, <laughs> and you will get tier 6 vehicles in your game. So if you're pissed at KV1SS, this is your answer. They come around a corner and you pump them for, for 800 damage and they die from one shell. You reload in 15 seconds and there's his buddy who finally found balls, he comes around the corner, you shoot him again and he dies. So now you have two kills. <laughs> and that's plainly the best thing that can ever happen if you're annoyed with KV1SS. So yeah, that's it for the review, review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope he, you liked it. And I'll see you guys basically next time. I don't know what kind of review for next week, I'll try to prepare, maybe the M103 will see. I don't have a lot of games and I want to have a weekly break of World of Tanks so I won't do the review for next week on the weekend but after after the two days the two days that I'll have the Monday and Wednesday will be the Monday and uh, Tuesday will be spent on doing games with the tank that I will want to play uh, to do a review with to get some good footage so thank you all for coming I hope you had a good time hit the like button and yeah, see you guys later.